Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson, and I'm coming to you live from Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And as part of our five things you should know, the topic today is cast gold restorations. Who would actually want to have a cast gold restoration in 2022? I mean, really? Gold? Come on, man. What about this beautiful tooth colored material that we have? Well, let's take a look a little bit deeper and let me help you understand why we believe that cast gold is the coolest, most amazing material you can have to restore your teeth in the posterior, in the back, right? All right, awesome. Let's take a look at this little example of three different patients. And I want you to think about what these three patients might have in common. This is Kevin, and Kevin had a lot of failing composite restorations. Look at all the brown, black around the edges and those cracks. That's really a clear sign that these restorations are leaking. And also, they don't look like teeth. They're kind of irregular looking and flat and worn. But Kevin went ahead and had all of these replaced and had cast gold restorations inserted. And notice how the difference between the original and the final is really not that different. After all the cavity is removed, we can keep cast gold restorations super conservative. Look at Tom here. Tom has silver fillings. He hated these silver fillings. They were working okay for him, but he wanted something longer lasting and something that actually brought back the brightness of his natural tooth. You would think he would want something white, but no. Tom opted again for cast gold. Look at the beautiful result that we can achieve with a cast gold procedure. And then finally, let's take a look at Tina. Tina has several existing composite restorations, and these restorations have decay underneath them, and they were very sensitive. She said, hey doc, I wanna have something that takes care of this problem, but I don't want it to show. What can I have? Hmm, I know, how about cast gold? She said, no, impossible. But I said, yes, you can definitely have cast gold and we can keep it conservative and it doesn't have to show when you smile. So what do all these patients have in common? The answer, they're all in the dental profession. Why then would a dental professional with all of the resources available to them, all of the choices available to them, why in the world would they select cast gold to restore their teeth? Perhaps it's because they understand that cast gold has five amazing characteristics. Great physical properties, it preserves tooth structure, it's long lasting, and it can be aesthetic as we showed, and then it can be cost effective. If it's done well, these restorations can last a lifetime. So what do we mean by great physical properties? Well, first of all, let's start out with looking at the fact that this is the most noble of all metals. So we look at noble metals on the elemental periodic table, and we're looking at these atoms, we notice that gold is one of the most noble of the noble metals which means it's biocompatible, which means it doesn't react with other substances. It's essentially elementally inert. Another thing that's amazing about gold, it's been used for thousands of years to restore teeth. This comes from the Etruscan period where we can see some teeth were actually added to a gold band to be used on a patient that was being mummified but at the same time, they wanted to have something that would be lasting eternal. Gold is the most malleable material. One ounce can be made to cover 100 square feet if you were to pound it thin enough. That's unbelievable. And then finally, gold is the most ductile material. It can be pulled into a wire 60 miles long. That's basically from Fredericksburg all the way to Bethesda, Maryland. Unbelievable, just one ounce of gold. If we take a look at the coefficient of thermal expansion, and basically what this is, 
is the tendency for materials to expand and contract, right? Expansion and contraction due to thermal changes. We find that gold alloy and human teeth is nearly identical. But take a look at composite over there in the pink. You can see that the composite material has a coefficient of thermal expansion of over 40, which means it's going to expand and shrink at a dramatically different rate and amount than two structure, which is part of the reason why composite restorations don't last a lifetime. All of the goals that are used today by dentists performing cast gold procedures are all fine grain, which means that the particles inside the gold are extremely small. And what this does is it allows us to get magical finishes in our restorations. These fine grain alloys are super tough, they're polishable, they get great fit, and they're really resistant to fatigue. In other words, they're gonna last the test of time in your mouth. The second thing that we want to talk about is preservation of tooth structure. Now, if you look at the images on the left and on the right, this is the same patient before treatment, in the middle of treatment, and then when the treatment was completed, you can see that the material of the gold is not much bigger than those silver fillings. Now, some dentists might even recommend doing crowns on these teeth, something really aggressive. I can't think of too many dentists that would think that way, but it's possible. But in the, but in the cast gold world, we can preserve the restorations to almost the same size as the original cavities. Look at another example of how these composite restorations, which incidentally were causing this patient a lot of discomfort and sensitivity, were replaced with cast gold procedures that were able to be made almost as small as the original cavities themselves. Long lasting. There is no doubt that cast gold is the longest lasting material we have. Even a nice ceramic onlay or inlay really doesn't have the life expectancy of more than about 12 to 15 years. Now that's just a ballpark range, but cast gold has the ability, cast gold has the ability to last many, many, many more years. In fact, we even are bold enough to say that cast gold can last a lifetime. Now, why do we say this? Well, we've got lots of studies to prove it. This is a beautiful study done by my friend, Terry Donovan, and it looked at Dr. Richard V. Tucker's cast gold restorations in his practice from one to 52 years. And they looked at these restorations in great detail after they had been placed. They found retrospectively, survival rates were 95% or more. The overall failure rate was only 4.6% over this really long period of time. This is one of the most amazing studies that we've published in dentistry because it shows us what's possible if you have an attention to detail and you know what you're doing. We at Stevenson Dental Solutions are a Tucker Institute. We perform Tucker dentistry. We do cast gold restorations the way Dr. Tucker taught. Dr. Tucker and Dr. Warren Johnson were two of my mentors in dentistry for over 20 years. And I currently mentor study clubs in three different countries and enjoy teaching other dentists how to perform cast gold procedures. One of the most important things, and it segues into our next point, is clinicians must understand that the term aesthetics is not synonymous with tooth colored. Interesting. Let's talk about that a little bit. This patient here wanted to have a material that was long as lasting because he was in a wheelchair and it was too difficult for him to get to the dental clinic and back, so he wanted the longest lasting restorative dentistry. This beautiful work was done by my friend, Mark Cruz. He is one of our Tucker dentists that, uh, in the greater study clubs of Tucker Academy. And you can see in this particular slide how all of these restorations that Mark did are beautiful and aesthetic, but also long lasting. Let's talk about aesthetic a little bit because when we talk about aesthetic, we have to understand that aesthetic does not equal cosmetic. I don't think it does. The question is, 
Does aesthetic equal cosmetic? Let's take a look at the definition of what these two terms mean. So let's take a look at aesthetic versus cosmetic. When we look at cosmetic, we're talking about something that is done for the sake of appearance. Basically, it's decorative, it's ornamental. It would be like makeup. Aesthetic is more about a, an attitude, a zealousness about beauty. Uh, it's about being artistic, about dealing with the beautiful, and recognizing where nature does a much better job than we do ourselves. And so I would say the term aesthetic does not equal cosmetic. So the question is, is gold aesthetic or cosmetic? And I would argue that it is 100% aesthetic. This is cosmetic dentistry gone bad. Take a look at it after these restorations have been in the mouth for about a decade or so. Look at all the leakage and the breakdown and the problems you see with these restorative materials. Now they don't all fail like this, this is for sure. I mean, it's kind of unfair to show a slide like this because this is not your typical good aesthetic dentistry, but it does show you that the white colored materials need to be white or tooth colored in order to be beautiful. Cast gold, on the other hand, can be placed into an individual's smile, just like this, and they don't show when you give a broad, wide smile. Here's another example. If you use gold carefully, you can make it inconspicuous. In other words, you can preserve the aesthetic beauty of the patient by restricting the way you have the gold extend around the tooth so that you get more of an aesthetic result that is not only pleasing to the patient, but long lasting. And that to me is really the exciting part of gold. And by the way, all three of these cases, the, the two before this and this one, were all done on young female patients that were extremely concerned about their aesthetic smile. This patient wanted the longest lasting material that didn't show. So one would think, oh my goodness, of course, you're gonna take out these amalgams and you're gonna place composite. I mean, there's just absolutely no question in my mind, right? Well, wrong, because this patient wanted long lasting. And when we look at a composite restorative material uh, in terms of its longevity, we're usually thinking of a small composite lasting about 10 years, maybe 15 years or so. Large composites, you can cut those numbers in half. So maybe five to seven and a half years for a large composite. But cast gold can be done on a patient like this by simply isolating the area, and that blue area is called a rubber dam, taking out the old silver fillings very carefully with suction and removing all of the materials that are in that uh, tooth that are not supposed to be there, like the amalgam and cavity and any other problems, then shaping the teeth and then taking a mold and taking this mold and then with the laboratory, fabricating cast gold restorations individually on all eight of these teeth. Taking all of these uh, castings now, going back to the patient after a week or so. And by the way, we do all of our own castings here at the, at the center at Stevenson uh, Dental Group. We do all of our own cast gold procedures here. So a lot of our patients will fly in from out of town spend the night in a hotel and the next day get their cast restorations and they'll fly home. So it's really very, very convenient. So these restorations turned out to be really wonderful. And the thing that's kind of cool about this particular case is none of these restorative materials show when the patient smiles, not one. They're all absolutely beautiful in her mouth and she is absolutely ecstatic with the final result. And you can see in this particular slide, we're combining cast gold and gold foil on that molar. That little teardrop shape on the side is a gold foil restoration, which we have always believed is critical to incorporate into your cast gold procedures. And here she is finished, and she was absolutely delighted with her smile. The last thing is cost effectiveness. If you perform these procedures really well, they could be the longest lasting material. They could be very biocompatible and a tooth like this with a, a lot of wear and a restoration that's basically standing up above the tooth can be replaced with something more conservative but also life lasting. So this would be a cast gold on lay procedure 
and we cement the restoration and we finish and polish it and look at the gorgeous fit you can get. You can't even feel the distinction between the gold and the tooth structure. This is a miracle procedure and I highly recommend it for your patients in your practice if you're a dentist, but you gotta learn how to do it, right? Because most dental schools don't teach this type of dentistry anymore. They just don't have the time in the curriculum. So this is a postgraduate type of a learning experience. The patient wanted the best and cost was not an issue. You can see here one of my colleagues, Dr. Patrick Dillon, who has a practice in West Los Angeles, a very dear friend of mine and one of my students perform these procedures on a very grateful patient that wanted to have the longest lasting dentistry. Look at this magical result that Pat was able to achieve using the Caskell procedures. It may be important for you to understand that when you make a decision between amalgam, composite, ceramic, and gold, you need to consider cost, convenience, biocompatibility, aesthetics, whether it's conservative or not, and longevity. And so we know that amalgam is really cheap. We know composite is a little bit more expensive. Ceramic is maximum expense, which is the same as gold. In terms of convenience, amalgam is a one-visit procedure. Composite, one-visit procedure. Ceramic, eh, it can be a one-visit procedure if you have CAD-CAM facilities at your practice. If you have a milling machine, you can do it at your own practice. But oftentimes, it takes a laboratory to make for you. And then gold is definitely not convenient. However, we always do all of our gold, and so I would change that X to a green check mark. Amalgam biocompatibility is clearly under suspicion and most countries in the world have basically eliminated amalgam from their choices and in the United States it's headed out as well. Composite, pretty green, but it does have toxins in it. There are a lot of free radicals and polymers that are in the composite which may have cytotoxic in other words, cell damaging products that leach out from the composites. Ceramic has the same consideration because all of these ceramic restorations are cemented with a composite, right? And then finally gold, it's got to get the triple green leaf because gold has got no problems with biocompatibility, particularly when you cement the restorations with a glass ionomer, non-composite cement. If we take a look at aesthetics, right? Amalgam can be okay, but also can be pretty good because you can hide the amalgam in the mouth, so aesthetically it can work. Composite is awesome. There's this, it's a beautiful blend of a natural white material into your natural white tooth structure. Ceramic, also great. But what about gold? So-so, but also might be really good. In other words, gold can be hidden and you can preserve a lot of the enamel that exists on your tooth, and that, to me, makes it very aesthetic. In terms of conservation, I say two burrs, because you have to grind on the tooth on a lot to do an amalgam, where on a composite, not as much grinding. Ceramic takes a lot of grinding, and gold takes grinding, but it can be a little bit smaller than ceramic, because we can actually make sharp internal features to hold the casting in place, and we can do this with a very small, thin restoration where ceramic needs to be a little bit bulkier to work. But in terms of longevity, let's look at longevity of amalgamates. Let's just say it's somewhere between 15 and 20 years for a small restoration. Composite is probably about, let's say, 10 to 15 years. Uh, ceramic is right around that 15 year mark, but gold can be for life. I would not be happy with a gold restoration that didn't last at least three decades, 30 years or more. When you're thinking about gold for yourself, you need to kind of have this arrangement of drops. In other words, you're, you're more inclined to go for the conservative and the long lasting than you are on the low cost and the convenience. Of course, we try to re increase the convenience tube because we're trying to get all those restorations done in one day. So if your patient or if you are a patient and you're wanting to have something that is super conservative and super long-term lasting, then you're gonna to want to go for a gold restoration. But cost initially is high, 
But over the course of a lifetime, not having to go back and repeat the procedure over and over again saves you time, money, and to structure. To see is to know. And I think if any dentist is going to be performing cast gold dentistry, you're going to want to use high magnification. On the left-hand screen, you can see that I'm utilizing a microscope, which I use routinely in my practice. And on the right-hand side, when the microscope cannot be utilized due to access issues, we use six power magnification with high intensity illumination. We need to isolate with rubber dam. We cannot do this procedure without rubber dam. Rubber dam ensures the tooth is treated in a clean environment. You can see here various different rubber dam configurations, and they're all done in order to preserve a clean operating field. I would never go to a dentist that failed to use rubber dam. Sorry, I know a lot of dentists are not happy to hear that, but I believe that rubber dam dentistry is at the top of the pyramid in terms of quality isolation protocols. It can be done without, and sometimes I have to go without rubber dam, but most commonly rubber dam is used for every procedure that we do. The dentist is gonna take out your old restoration very carefully with the rubber dam in place, look for any problems inside here, place some kind of a block out to replace missing tooth structure, and then they're going to have the preparation completed where the decay is removed and maybe it goes in between like in this particular case. It doesn't always, but it may go in between. We're now ready to take an impression. And so what we like to do is leave the rubber dam on and then take the impression with the rubber dam uh, either in place or just removed just before the impression. And we can get amazing results like this on a patient that had really gross, you know, decayed, ugly looking composite restorations. And when I asked her what she wanted, she fit the profile of longevity and biocompatibility. And she was very interested in conservative dentistry. And so the natural choice was, I said, well, you may want to consider gold. At first she's like, gold, are you kidding me? And I said, well, here's a few pictures of some of my cases. She says, oh my God, it's beautiful. I would love to have that gold in my mouth. So we completed the case with gold. So in summary, let's just understand that cast gold is an amazing option for you. We have great physical properties. We preserve tooth structure. It can be incredibly long lasting. And my go-to number is at least 30 years. It may be quite aesthetic if it's done well, right? And then it can be cost effective because you don't have to keep redoing it over and over and over again. So anyway, I just wanted to thank you. If you did want to text me and you had any questions, you could do that at this number or send us an email at info at stevensondentalsolutions.com. We'd be happy to address any of your concerns. Once again, thank you for spending this episode of five things you should know about X, where X is cast gold restorations. I'm Dr. Stevenson signing out from Stevenson Dental Solutions. Take care.